There's nothing better than payback, especially when it's self-imposed. Well, mostly self-imposed. This man expects to use a worker's cleaning apparatus to wash his car, but he doesn't realize the big mistake he's making. This woman finds out it doesn't pay to be rude to the cashier. Or maybe it does, just not in the way she expected. And our fan submitted story. Fighting fire is a hard job, but it's made even harder when this man won't leave the firefighters alone. Who is this man and what does he want? You'll only find out by watching this episode of Voice He Hears Entitled Parents featuring malicious compliance. This story was called, You Want to Use My Truck Wash on Your Car? I do not feel sorry for what is about to happen here. Concrete mixers are big, ungainly things. Trying to maneuver them around a crowded job site is like trying to play miniature golf with a tennis ball. The biggest problem is, of course, other people. Specifically, other people's cars. Nobody is going to lug 50 pounds of tools any further than they have to. So if there is an open space near where they want to be, they park there. Never mind that it is right next to the sidewalk or directly across from a driveway that a crew is obviously prepping. It only makes things worse when it's done by people who should know better and done intentionally. So we're pumping a grout walls in the late afternoon, which already has me in a bit of a mood. Grout jobs tend to be very slow. Each cinder block has two cells, and the crew pumps the grout into those cells, filling them all the way to the top of the wall. Grout is really just a term for a weak concrete mix that is pumped super wet. It has to be that wet to make it all the way to the bottom of the wall, otherwise it sticks to the sides of the cinder blocks, or gets caught up on the steel reinforcement. There is a lot of stopping and starting, as well as a lot of moving the pump. It all takes time, during which that concrete starts to go off and stiffen up. Things only get worse on a hot day and the subs will do anything to get more water in the load. As we move to a new street, we find a line of cars parked all along the side of the street we are working on, just far enough apart to make as much space as possible, without leaving enough room to get the pump in there. Turns out it is another concrete crew setting up to do patios. No problem, we're all concrete guys here, and they know how it works. We ask them to move. The fact I am writing this post tells you what their response was. It turns out they're waiting for their own pump and mixer to show up, and they intentionally blocked the street because they didn't want us to be in their way. Their crew chief tells us we can wait for them to finish and move on, or we can just work around them. It's pretty obvious he expects us to wait. Waiting is, of course, going to make the concrete go off even more, and will rack up standby charges for the customer. But trying to work around their cars is going to mean blocking the street and rolling up the hose every time we move. Normally the crew just drags or carries it down the sidewalk, but we can't do that with the cars in the way. It would take much longer. Depending on where their pump shows up, it might not even save us any time. Still, Todd the pumper rolls his pump right up next to the lead car and feeds his hose out around it. At the best of times, a concrete pump farts and sputters like a nervous chihuahua, flinging small globs of concrete out the hopper. If the driver isn't paying attention and accidentally lets the concrete level get too low, the pump sucks in air. Feeding a concrete pump air is like feeding a hippopotamus alestra. Crap's not pretty, and it gets everywhere. We probably end up moving that pump twice as many times as we have to, but it ensures that every single one of those cars gets to spend some quality time next to the hopper. We finish, are done with the job, and are washing out the pump when the crew chief, whose own concrete and pump still haven't shown up yet, storms over to complain about all the concrete splatter on their cars. I point out that we told them we'd be pumping there and asked them to move, but they refused. At this point, he he sees that I have a truck wash bucket strapped to my water tank and demands I let him use it to clean off his car. I tell him that's a terrible idea. Smoking lounge on the Hindenburg levels of terrible. The stuff we use is designed to dissolve dried concrete and it will probably damage his car. The concrete is fresh enough that he can probably just rinse it off with water. He isn't having it. He tells me to stop lying. If it doesn't damage my truck, it won't hurt his car. Besides, he's done this before and knows what he is doing. Now, keeping a concrete mixer clean is a downright Sisyphean task. No matter how hard you try, shoots overflow, pumps splatter, and plants huff cement powder all over your truck. There are a variety of chemicals used to clean off concrete, 
and most of the modern mixes are relatively safe. For something that can dissolve concrete, our plants provide a phosphoric acid mix. Relatively safe isn't the same as actually safe to any drivers that need it, so it's quite common for there to be a bucket of it stashed somewhere on the truck. Of course, part of what makes these chemicals safer also makes them somewhat less effective. That's why some of us will bring in our own cleaning products to fortify the company mix. These are not the friendly chemicals that will just leave you with a mild chemical burn. My bucket of fun dips down to the good old days of leaded gasoline, asbestos, and red dye number two. Still, I warned him, and he assured me he knew what he was doing. Besides, he's intentionally being a jerk, and expected my sub to pay standby for his convenience. I let him have the bucket. I half expect him to stop when he pulls the lid off. The witch's brew in the bucket smells like Walter White's bathtub. Somehow, the fact that his nose hairs are curling up like a spider in a flame doesn't seem to faze him. Brush goes in the bucket, brush comes out of the bucket. Brush slams onto the hood of the car with a wet slap. I can only watch in mute horror as the man proceeds to not just clear off the concrete, but bathe his entire hood in hydrochloric acid, rubbing it in to get out all those nasty water spots. It's like watching an orphan unwittingly skin his favorite puppy. None of us stick around long enough to see the final result, but it is already apparent that he has scrubbed off the clear coat and is in the process of etching brush marks in the paint. I don't want to be anywhere near him when that hood dries out. I let him keep the bucket. This story is the incarnation of the idiom, what goes around comes around. The workers thought by leaving their cars there that they would have the advantage, and they tried to warn them that that's where they would be pumping the concrete, but they just didn't want to listen. For some people, their arrogance only creates more and more disaster. I don't particularly take pleasure out of other people's misfortune, but if there's anyone who deserves it, it's somebody who just doesn't listen. This story was called, When Retail Customers Feel Entitled to Extra Discounts for No Reason. So, you give it to them. I worked at a pretty popular department store for years, and I have to say that the customers this store breeds are the worst of the worst. This store is probably 90% of the reason that so many customers feel as entitled as they do. The cashier had the hiccups, it was incredibly annoying. Isn't there anything you can do for me? Was an actual honest to God complaint one lady had for me when I was a supervisor. So anyway, I was covering a break up at the registers. I was a supervisor at the time, and I had also already given my two weeks notice. I was beyond fed up. It was like a spring of my senior year all over again. So I'm up at the registers, and this lady who couldn't have been more than 40, comes up with a huge cart full. Anyone who has worked retail, you know this woman. She's got the hair. She's smacking her gum at me while she talks on the phone. The entire transaction is delayed because I need her to pay and she starts to ignore me because apparently I'm the rude one for interrupting her phone call. She proceeds to tell the person on the other end, give me a second and finally turns to me and says, as if I'm an impatient child testing her last bit of patience, Yes? Here's your total, ma'am. Do you have any coupons or rewards to use today? She nodded, and here is when she drops a few clippings on the counter in front of me, ignoring my outstretched hand, and turns her attention back to her phone. As soon as I look at the coupons, I see that none of them are usable. She has one that is $10 off your menswear purchase of $50 or more. She has all women's clothing. The next coupon expired two months ago. Another one doesn't start for another week, etc. So I try again to get her attention. She's just as lovely and accommodating as the last time. She rolls her eyes, tells the person on the phone that she will have to call them back, and gives me another sharp, yes. Sorry ma'am, this coupon is expired. This one hasn't started, and this one is for when you purchase $50 worth of menswear. Do you have any other coupons or rewards? She stares at me like I just called her mother some unsavory name. <laughs> Excuse me, what? What could I do but shrug helplessly? You have got to be kidding me. This is the entire reason I came out here today, to use those coupons. I really can't use them? Unbelievable. Some customer service here. All the while she's packing her useless coupons back into her purse and glaring scorch marks into my soul. Remember I said I was done? My patience before Shopzilla here was already at zero. She tipped the scales. I was officially in the negatives. I had negative fricks and negative patience left. 
So when she said, you should be ashamed of yourself for being so rude to a customer, something in me snapped. I smiled sweetly at her, mustered up a bright and cheery expression that I usually reserve for my waitress face, and said, I'm so sorry you feel that way ma'am, but on the bright side, since it's Tuesday, I can still apply your senior's discount, so at least you aren't losing that one, right? I can't quite describe her expression. I think she was angry, but I think she was more shocked. And in that state of shock, she sputtered out, I'm not a senior! I mimicked her shock, trying to appear horrified by my accidental faux pas, and then immediately said, let me take that off of there for you then, and promptly took the senior discount off, bumping her total up another $20. I'm sorry for the misunderstanding ma'am. Oh boy was she ticked, but like I said, I think she was more shocked. She seemed a little dumbfounded. She paid. She took her stuff, she left. I will take that petty moment of satisfaction at her horrified expression to my grave. It was even worth the write-up that I did end up getting after she called the store and gave my manager a piece of her mind. There are a lot of people who use expired coupons because often the cashier won't really check or they might not really care. I don't think this woman was ignorant. I think she knew they weren't supposed to be used, but just tried her luck. So if you're a cashier who actually cares about that, then you gotta be on your toes because there's a lot of customers out there who are gonna try and take advantage of you. But today she messed with the wrong person, a frustrated cashier that had nothing to lose. Sometimes there are those magic moments in life that you wish you had a little hidden camera on you at all times, just so you can recall what that expression was on that lady's face. This fan submitted story was called Sir, you really shouldn't be here. It's not safe. So this is the first time I've shared a story in Reddit. Here goes. This is maybe more an r slash malicious compliance, but I got some petty revenge, so I thought this might fit. I've been working as a firefighter for a few years and have a lot of messed up or funny stories. It's pretty normal when called out for a big fire that there's a few journalists always hungry for a story while either interrupting or getting in the way of our work. Mostly they're pretty cool when we come and ask them to go. Some we even work with to make sure they actually understand what happened. But sometimes, oh man, they can be a pain. This time we were called out to a big fire in a local inn, the kind of inn you go to vacation on to get away from everything. When we got there, we immediately started the evaluation of the inn guests and the owner. A few had to go to the hospital for all kinds of reasons, mostly burns or inhaling smoke, but we got everyone out alive, which is the important part. Next we try and save the building, but it is a very old building with a straw roof. It was an uphill battle, enter the crappy journalist. I was outside with all my gear on, spraying water on the roof when I see a reporter walking up almost next to me, starting to take pictures. I inform him that it was unsafe to be here due to the smoke and the building could collapse, showing him both I and my partner was in full gear. You can't tell me I can't be here! Sir, you really need to take a few steps back. It's not safe. Just do your job. I'm not in your way, and I have a right to be here. Sir, just shut up and do your job and let me do mine. You, insert nasty word. Technically, he's right. We can't force him away unless there's an immediate danger. Us being too busy, can't babysit this guy, continue our job. Unfortunately, we couldn't save the building and had to do a controlled burn, where we simply control where it's burning so it doesn't spread to nearby buildings. It's a shame. It really was a beautiful inn. Kinda tourist attraction. I should probably mention the fire started at about 11pm and we fought with the fire all night until the morning came. I don't remember the time, being totally tired, but remember seeing the owner looking at the debris, being absolutely devastated. You could see it in this old man's eyes. His pride and joy were destroyed overnight. He was shaking and could hardly stand. That's when I see CJ walk up to him and start questioning the old man, and not in a nice way. I could tell the old man was not in the mood for answering questions from the annoying journalist. I and my partner walk up and ask him to leave the poor man alone, and it wasn't appropriate to interview him now. 
CJ looks at us annoyed, but leaves. Later I was walking across the debris, looking for anything that might be on fire, or something to save. Sometimes we find something like a statue, or a picture that can be saved for the owner, which they usually really like. When I noticed CJ was walking around on site, Sir, what are you still doing here? It's not safe. Just taking pictures, can't you tell? I don't see any fire. Why don't you just go home already? There's no fire, but that doesn't mean it's safe. If I see a fire, I'll call it out, okay? Sir, it's not- Just shut up! I know what I'm doing. Sir, he ignores me. I look him up and down in his casual clothes and had just about enough of him. Now, building debris can hold heat for a very long time. That's why we're wearing safety gear all the time, especially fire boots. I shrug and leave. He said he knew what he was doing. About an hour later, I walk back to the fire trucks and notice CJ sitting next to a nearby ambulance. The heat from the debris burned through his shoes and burned part of his feet, melting his shoes. Apparently, it wasn't safe without the gear, if only someone had told him. The old man ended up buying everyone from the fire department pizza for our effort, and he was a pretty cool old man. I feel no remorse for CJ. Now, he wasn't stopping us from doing our job as some reporters do, but he was harassing the old man and being really rude to us when we warned him. Moral of the story, if a firefighter tells you to move, it's probably for a good reason. I think that's part of why I would never want to be a journalist. They have to get right in people's faces during some of the most traumatic moments in their life to get a good story to sell on the news. It doesn't mean that all journalists are heartless. I'm sure some of them would need really good people skills to actually talk to them, to hear their story. It's just probably the last thing somebody needs when they're going through a hard time like that, is have a camera thrown in their face and a complete stranger asking them how they feel. This story was called, Is it okay for my aunt to come uninvited to my birthday party after being told not to show up and then demand gifts? Okay, my aunt was basically disowned after what happened and then she was told she couldn't show up to my birthday, but she came anyway. Seeing as my mum wasn't in the mood to deal with her, she let it be, but that was when she started acting up. She accidentally poured her drink on me and my siblings then demanded that I get her another. Later on, she came into my room when I was with my friends and told me to help her get food or she would tell my mum I was doing drugs in my room. Not wanting to do it, I told her to do it herself. She said nothing and went away. Near the end, it was time to open gifts. My nice aunt didn't know what a 16 year old wanted, so she gave me birthday money. I swear my evil aunt's face lit up seeing the money and not wanting to deal with her stealing it. I put it in my dad's old safe he gave me before he moved. Then, when I got my gift from my dad, a new Airsoft G36C. My aunt grabbed at it and my dad told her to stop and my aunt just kept screaming about how guns are dangerous and she was doing me a favor by taking it and giving it to her irresponsible 12 year old child. My mum was done with her sister. The following conversation happened. Why are you doing this? You weren't even invited. I was saving your son from gun violence. You should be thanking me. By giving it to your 12 year old boy who cuts up wires to a plugged in computer? Absolutely not. Leave now. Wait, we're family. Not anymore. You've been nothing but trouble since you showed up. Just leave now. Wait until my husband comes here. He will show you to turn down family like that. Leave now. Okay then, give me the birthday money. How about you leave before my dad deals with you? You are rude. She leaves, but not before grabbing the whole freaking safe, which contained my money and my airsoft MK18, and as well as my grandfather's ashes. It was heavy. My dad caught up with her and grabbed it from her and told her to never come back ever again. I heard later on she was taken to rehab after being caught with her drugs on her way back from my party. So if she had drugs on her the whole time at the party and she was going to accuse the son of doing drugs in the room, she was probably going to frame him and use the drugs and accuse the son of taking them. I'm not sure what kind of penalty you could get for doing such a thing, but surely it's going to be a lot worse than just possession of drugs. So that's pretty messed up. Proximity is usually the greatest cause of conflict, which is why there's usually so much conflict within families. There's a lot of proximity and usually very little effort put into conflict resolution. Having a family member that just causes drama like this doesn't help. If you'd like your story to be narrated by me, don't forget to visit the subreddit r slash voicey here, link below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Alright, I'll see you in the